Hi, welcome to uh, the first in a series of tutorials where we'll be going over modding in VR Funhouse. Uh, hopefully at this point you guys have already given VR Funhouse a try, played it on Steam, and uh, you've got all the tools and prerequisites you need to, to start this tutorial. Um, you'll get the game from Epic's Game Launcher, and I also suggest heavily uh, getting familiar with Unreal Engine 4 as a base. Uh, Ep Epic has a very large amount of tutorials and documents covering a wide variety of use cases in Unreal Engine 4. I highly recommend spending a lot of time on the blueprints section as that'll be a heavy, heavy, uh, heavily used thing in VR Funhouse. We predominantly did all of our gameplay in blueprint, so what you are editing is what we edited. You are seeing nothing different than what the development team saw throughout the, pr the production of VR Funhouse. So this is a fully open uh, editor. We have hidden no features and you are free to hack and slash as much as you want. Uh, so the, pr the purpose of this first tutorial is to give you a brief overview of kind of where everything is in the editor, uh, how we did our level logic and streaming. So let's go ahead and dive right in. You should have at this point um, gotten the editor up and running. This is kind of your introduction. Uh, and it will automatically load user VR underscore base two. This is our persistent level. This is what the game loads. This is what, when you go ahead and go to play the game, um, what you're first loaded into. You'll actually see that level uh, name listed here. This is your currently active edited level. And uh, up here, you'll also see it again. So uh, I want to talk about the different parts of the level loading structure. Uh, and you should have a level tab down here to your right showing your persistent level, which is user VR base two, and all the individual sub levels that are used in VR Funhouse's game. If you don't have this tab, go ahead and go up to window and find levels right here. And it should give it to you. So the, the first one I'll talk about is Envirosphere. This is loaded effectively uh, all the time. So this is our basic static world on the outside. Uh, this is a prime candidate for modification. Uh, you'll see in the big top mod that we launch on Steam, we, we change this out for a big top. Um, this is generally loaded all the time. Uh, underneath that, we also load normally two additional levels. One is the game level, so each individual game has its own level. So uh, Foam Gun is the Clown Painter, Bow is Fire Archer, Confetti is Balloon Knight. Um, and on top of that, we also load a dynamic set of lights. So I'm going to go ahead and show that real quick. So if I were to open up Clown Painter, you'll see it's pretty dark. Uh, it's just got the kind of the static lighting in there. Uh, but for this particular level, we load the stream lights. These are dynamic lights that are used to kind of get the look and feel we were really looking for. We were really, really looking for, uh, you know, some real dynamic lighting that Unreal could provide in this situation. So every time you load into a new level, whether it be Fire Archer, Balloon Knight, uh, Whack-A-Mole, we're loading two things. We're loading the lights that are very specifically made for that level, uh, and we're also loading the level itself. So for instance, um, hair, the hair level the, is going to actually use the stream hair lights. Uh, and the reason for that being is we wanted to have some different shadow properties. We wanted the light to be a little closer, generally just artistic look and feel. So the next thing is, is I want to show you guys real basically like the blueprints that are used and what each individual level uses them for. So you have these nice buttons in the level tab. They'll take you directly to the blueprint for that level. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the blueprint level for the persistent and show you guys what it's mainly used for. The persistent level is generally just used, this is a lot of stuff I realize, but I'm gonna point you in at the right spot. Uh, it's generally just used for loading the individual sub-levels. So as you can see here, we, we, you know, we do some loading for, uh, for the Envirosphere, but this is kind of the important one, is set up level streaming. And it is where we load our games in the order we load them in. So once the HMB is enabled, we'll load uh, Clown Painter, we'll load Fire Archer. Uh, we also have this very large array, which you see I've already added some new pins to. You can actually, if you wanted to add a bunch of new games at the end, this is where you would do it. You would just type in, you know, stream uh, new game. And as long as your sub-level was named that, you could load in that in the order. You can actually change the order at this point. This is the main purpose of the persistent level is loading the sub-levels. Uh, the individual game levels 
are where most of the scoring and gameplay is set up. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the, uh, the Clown Painter here real quick. And I'll show you the level blueprint for that. Uh, and you'll see here, we, we actually set up the uh, on, on the first of begin tick right here. We set up the score timer. We get our scorekeeping set up. Um, we're, we're doing our saving of our score. We're initializing a lot of arrays, and this is initializing, initializing basically like the balloon position, uh, the different triggers, stuff like that. Uh, and finally, the other thing you're going to do inside of each of the game sublevels is set up the quality settings. So we have three quality settings, low, medium, high, and they do various things for various levels. They set uh, the screen percentage, they set the amount of multi-res we use, the post-process uh, AA we use. And finally, uh, for, for certain levels, this isn't done in all levels, but some levels we actually change the amount of uh, simulation we're producing on low, medium, or high. Uh, in Clown Painter, for instance, um, a lower-end graphics card won't be able to supply as much simulation for all the different fluid as a higher-end one, so we have different emitters that we shoot out based on your, uh, your setting at the time. Uh, the final thing I want to talk about is the, the last thing you need for all your levels. So each of these individual game levels will also have a, uh, a blueprint for the settings. Uh, your uh, your HMD in your hands so actually ha what your hands are going to do in the world so I'm gonna go ahead and hide all this other stuff except for just the foam gun and you'll actually see all these in a bit pretty much the same place they're gonna be this little blueprint actor ball uh, edit VR set it so this is VR settings base is gonna be the base type uh, we've named it obviously something specific for the foam gun uh, and what is inside of this is like I said basically what hands you're using so we have all these different uh, kind of hands right here. Right now, the foam gun's gonna use paint gun complete BP. Uh, these are under VR demo assets blueprints, and you'll actually be able to go in here and see all the different kind of hands we have. So we've got boxing gloves. Um, you know, you can put in, you could, you have both your hands be boxing gloves if you wanted to in this level. You could uh, take a gun, put it in your right hand, put a boxing glove in your left hand. You're free to do any of those type of things you want. This is what hap This is where a lot of the magic happens. Is um, you know we drop the settings base on there, and then we go ahead and go out to the actual blueprints. And like I said, these are if you're wanting to change what happens with your hands, you can open up the sub blueprints at this point and get in and, and change how the gun actually behaves. Maybe you want to just change what the gun looks like. This is the place to do it. Is inside the individual hand blueprints. This is a really brief kind of higher level overarching look at the main components of uh, Unreal Engine 4's and our implementation into that for VR Funhouse. Um, I wanted to talk real briefly about one last thing that we put in all the level for your modders to, to, to be able to use. Uh, out here in the corner, um, you'll actually sign something called mod clown painter underscore BP. Uh, it's gonna be named specific for each level. If you're doing a direct replacement, you're able to just mod these are these are blank these are totally blank blueprints but they are lot loaded at the beginning of every level so they're kind of your uh, your Pandora's box to open up and do whatever you want you can um, you know search for all of a certain class and replace them with your own you can uh, go ahead and, and you know change any sort type of things you want from here so if you actually opened up this as a full blueprint editor you will see it as a blank blueprint so feel free to use this as an easy way to do uh, all sorts of various things for the individual levels thanks for uh, joining me with this video uh, future videos will go a little bit more deep diving uh, and we'll go through how to make a couple sample mods so I'll see you in the next video which is going to be the uh, Tommy guns so I'll see you in the next video